For today's video, we're going to begin by discussing one of the early pivotal moments that eventually would culminate in the Civil War. Now, some of you might be asking, why is there a dog in your lap? To which I will respond, don't you normally submit YouTube videos with your dogs? To which you will respond, yes, Mr. Phelps, I do. And I will say, so there. Actually, my dog is a descent, my dog, who happens to be a descendant from wolves, is actually relevant to today's lesson. Our story begins way before the Civil War, back in 1819. Actually, never mind, it begins actually with a review of the United States Constitution. It goes back that far. If you recall, there are two houses to our legislative branch. No, 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 not those houses. There we go. We have, of course, the House of Representatives, which is determined by population. In other words, California, with 37 million people living in our great state, has 53 representatives in the House. While Wyoming, which has about half a million people, which is about half the size of San Jose in an entire state, has one representative. Of course, the, the well-known Cynthia Lummis. Then we have the Senate. In the Senate, every single state has two senators. No more, no less. California has two senators. And Wyoming has two senators. Now, as we have talked about, as the North and South developed, the North would have more people in the House of Representatives. Why? Because they had more cities, more factories, more immigrants. They had a greater population. More people jammed into smaller places. The South was largely rural, meaning there were a lot of farms. And there were, they had fewer people spread out over a larger area. In addition, there were millions of slaves in the South. You may recall that the U.S. Constitution declared that each slave was worth three-fifths of a person, meaning all those slaves, if you, there were a million slaves, they would only be counted as 600,000 people when they determined representation. Now, the fact that the U.S. Constitution declared that there were some human beings who were only worth three-fifths of a human being shows that the U.S. Constitution, although it was a great document, certainly was not perfect. In the beginning of our nation's history, there were slaves all over the 13 colonies. Now, as time went on, Slavery gradually died away in the North as it became less agricultural, but slavery persisted in the South, and in fact, it exploded in the South. It was very clear, in fact, by the early 1800s that slavery was a main feature of Southern states, and it was soon prohibited in all of the Northern states, which meant that there would be a battle over whether or not to keep slavery legal, or to try to eliminate it. If a bill prohibiting slavery were to go to the Congress, it would have to pass both the House of Representatives and the Senate. Clearly, the House would favor the North. If the North, want, if the North wanted to, and not all Northerners wanted to do this, but if the North wanted to pass a bill banning slavery outright, it could pass the House. However, the South could prevent the North from making it a law as by, by blocking it in the Senate as long as the number of slave states equaled the, another, the number of free states. So, here comes the big issue. In the year 1819, the territory that was known as, the Missouri, as Missouri 
were requested to become a state. At this point, it was evenly broken down. 11 free states, 11 slave states. That meant that nothing, no pro, extremely pro-slavery or extremely anti-slavery bills could pass and become law because one side would block the other. It was split perfectly, 11 and 11. Now, the Missouri Territory had about 50,000 white people living in it and about 10,000 slaves. The territory obviously then applied as a slave state. It wanted to become a slave state. But that would tip the balance either way. It would tip the balance to make it more slave-owning than free. So Congress, therefore, did what it does best, doing nothing. Congress refused to entertain any bill, just sit and wait, which is what Congress does best. But this meant that Missouri couldn't become a state. This was a real crisis. People, the temper started to flare. People started to get angry. Slave owners started to be getting, getting angry at uh, free state people. The free state residents started getting angry at slaveholding states. This started to show that slavery was becoming a big issue. Luckily, a superhero came to the rescue. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a senator from Kentucky. Anyways, uh, it, his name is Henry Clay, and Henry Clay came in and brokered a deal. He got, got the sides to make a deal. At this same time, Maine... In the northeast, the northernmost northeast, the most corner of, uh, of the states, uh, was requesting to become a state at the same time. And so Henry Clay said, let's keep the balance of slave and free states by admitting Maine as a free state and then admitting Missouri as a slave state. And so then it would be 12 and 12, 12 free, 12 slave. He also came up with an idea that he thought and he believed this would settle all the disputes in the future regarding slavery. He came up with an imaginary line that would be 36, 36 degrees, 30 minutes north latitude, 36, 30 north latitude cutting right across the country. And everything above the line would be free. Everything below the line would be a slave state. And this became known as the Missouri Compromise. And this was the first time that people saw how volatile an issue slavery could become. And this actually brings us to why the dog is here, the descendant from a wolf. It was because this, the significance of the Missouri Compromise showed how slavery was becoming a divisive issue, and it was very hard to solve the problem of slavery. Thomas Jefferson, around this time, said that dealing with slavery is sort of like grabbing a wolf by the ear. Oh. Grabbing a wolf by the ear. You can't hold on, and you can't let go. I, I think the metaphor works a little bit better with a real wolf instead of a chihuahua, but he basically, he started to realize that this was an unsolvable, unsolvable problem either way. And as you know, we did have a civil war, so this was one of the compromises, one of the, the attempts that people made to prevent the civil war that ultimately would fail. And we'll talk about some of those other events in future videos. In the meantime, Make sure that you have a good afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow, unless it is the weekend. Then I will see you Monday, unless it's a holiday weekend. Then I will see you Tuesday.